Hey everybody, I'm Sean Powers and today is going to be kind of a quick one. We're going over how to use system CTL to manage services in a system D controlled Linux environment. That sounds far more complicated than it is, but we're going to call this 1.4.1 of the Linux plus objectives. And we are going to cover the one command system CTL. However, it has a bunch of different arguments and it's important to know how they work and even more importantly, what they do to the services that are installed on your system, because it can be confusing if you don't understand the nuances between like enable, disable, mask and unmask and that sort of a thing. Speaking of which. I've kind of separated the different commands into their groupings. For example, start and stop, what we're going to see on the command line in a second, will start and stop services in real time, like right now. If you do systemctl start Apache 2, it'll start the Apache 2 server. Uh, systemctl stop Apache 2, it'll stop it. But that has nothing to do with what happens during boot or when the system starts up fresh. That's where enable and disable come into play. And this is only affecting when the system boots. Okay. So if we enable a service, which we're going to do, uh, it will enable it to start automatically when the system boots up. Disable will do just the opposite. It will make sure that when the system starts up, like you reboot your computer, whatever sys, whatever service we're talking about will not start automatically. We could still do it manually with start, but by default, it will not start if we have it disabled when the system boots up. And then these two are uh, less commonly used, and these are the ones that can cause a little bit of confusion. So mask and unmask means we basically make it so that it cannot be used. So if you mask a service, like if we do systemctl mask Apache 2, we will not be able to start or stop the service because it's masked. And that just means like it's completely, I don't want to say the word disabled because that actually means something, but it's, it's completely unable to be run. It will not start on boot. It will not start if you tell it to start, if it's masked. And then to uh, remove that limitation, you unmask. Okay. And I'll, when we get in there, I'll show you what it actually does. Uh, but just know that mask and unmask are completely making it so that it cannot be started automatically or otherwise. All right. And then status is just kind of a standalone that does, you'll never guess, give you the status of, of a, a service on your computer. See if it's running, see if it's not running. If there are errors, it'll show you just a brief little version of what went wrong when it tried to start and that sort of a thing. So let's get to the command line and actually do uh, some system CTL work. Okay, so I'm here on our Linux system and the one system CTL command that we can do without root privilege, without using sudo is system CTL status, and then what service we want to look at. And in our case, I did install Apache 2, so we can play with that service. So I'll say the status of Apache 2, and it will give us what that status is. And it, it tells us some things here. It says that it's loaded, it's currently inactive, meaning it's not running, it's dead. Uh, and let's see, uh, the Apache 2 service is disabled. Okay, so it will not start on boot. And preset means like when it was first installed, what was, here, let me stretch this out because it actually hid some of it. All right, there we go. Uh, so it's disabled now, but the preset, meaning like when we installed it, it was enabled. So if you're on a Debian machine and you install Apache 2, by default, it will be enabled and will start every time the computer boots up. Okay, so that just tells you what it was. And you can tell that I came in here and disabled it because it's in disabled mode. All right, so I'm going to press Q because we it, there's, there's a bunch here. If there's a bunch of lines, we could scroll up and down. Uh, so we're kind of like in the less command, but I'm just going to press Q on my keyboard to get out of here. All right, so we have the command line back. And now what we could do is say sudo, remember everything else requires sudo, systemctl start Apache 2. Okay, so it started. And now if we do systemctl status, we should see different stuff. And sure enough, it says that it is uh, loaded, it's active and running. Uh, it still says that it's disabled and the preset is, en is enabled. I didn't change the presets or I didn't change whether it's enabled or disabled. I just started it. Okay. And it started and it gives us a little bit of information here. All right. So we can do the same thing to stop it. Well, almost the same thing. Pseudo system CTL stop Apache 2. And then we're going to be in the same boat that we were just a little while ago. See, it's inactive, it's dead uh, and all that stuff. Now, in order to, <coughs> hey, it's me. Sean from about 10 minutes in the future. I realized that I didn't talk about the restart command and 
I'm not going to reshoot the video because you can probably figure out what sudo systemctl restart Apache 2 does. It restarts the service. So uh, pretend I taught that and demonstrated it. Restart. You got it. Thanks. Make sure it starts when the computer boots up. Do you remember what command we would use? We would say sudo systemctl enable Apache 2. Okay, what it actually does is it actually creates a symbolic link in the proper place on the system so that it knows to start up. But if we do a status now, it should be a little bit different. So systemctl status Apache 2, we can see it is inactive. It's dead. I didn't start it. I'd left it in the stopped mode. However, now it is enabled. So if I rebooted the computer, it would start automatically on system boot. Hopefully that makes sense. And to change that back, we would do the same thing. We'd say sudo systemctl disable Apache 2. Okay, it actually removed that syslink and stuff that it does. And now if we do the uh, status Apache 2, we're going to see, sure enough, it's disabled again. Okay, that's pretty simple. Now, the thing is, if we were to do mask, it's different. So sudo systemctl mask Apache 2. Okay, this is what it does. It's actually interesting how it works. It created a symlink of etc. systemd system apache 2.service, but it symbolically linked it to dev null, which means it cannot possibly start because it's pointing to dev null, which is, I mean, that's pretty drastic, right? Uh, if we try to start it, it should give us an error, in fact. Uh, sudo systemctl start apache2. Whoa, it says it's masked. It recognized that it's, you know, completely, I don't want to say disabled. <laughs> it's completely uh, unusable because it is masked. In fact, we can't enable it now either. Pseudo systemctl enable Apache 2. It's going to say, I can't do that because it is masked. Okay. Uh, if we do systemctl status Apache 2, we're going to say, boom. Uh, it's inactive, dead, and it's masked, so it doesn't even tell us anything about it, right? As far as a computer is concerned, Apache 2 does not exist. So let's unmask it so we can actually do some stuff with it. sudo systemctl unmask Apache 2. And now, if we look at the status, we're going to see it's still disabled. Because when I tried to enable it, it failed. So it didn't change whether or not it was enabled on boot. If we want to enable it, now we can because we unmasked it. sudo systemctl enable Apache 2. And now if we look at the status, we're going to see it's enabled. It's still not running. So we'd also have to do sudo systemctl start Apache 2. And now if we look at status, it's going, it's running. Okay, it's active, it's running, and it's enabled. Okay, so it will restart when the computer reboots. Now, like I said, this video was pretty quick, but I didn't want to lump this in with some other command. I wanted you to really get the gist of using systemctl to control systemd services. Uh, when they start, how they start, if they start, if they're able to be started using all of those tools. Anyway, a uh, special thanks to the folks who are scrolling by over here who are my Patreon supporters. Maybe that's you. Uh, if so, thank you so much. I have to admit, I used to hate System D, but I've kind of grown to love it. I think it's a pretty elegant way to start and stop services. And uh, I write my own services. That's how I start my Docker uh, containers is I actually write a system D initialization file. And then I use system CTL to start and stop my Docker containers. So uh, in fact, there's a video, maybe I'll put a link to it up there, how you can do that. But I used to hate system D. I've grown to love it and you need to know it for the Linux plus certification. So I hope this has been helpful. Remember to learn everything. Do what you love, and most importantly, be kind. I'll see you in the next video.